What I'm wondering, though, is this thing about this notion of being free. If I subscribe to a service that's offered by somebody, generally there are conditions, which I and millions of other Americans don't read. We just say, okay. Most of those conditions allow them to track me. And I'm going to ask Mr. Rothenberg and anyone else, but Mr. Rothenberg and Mr. Lent from the industry may understand the importance of what is this they're, they're, they're tracking me and what exactly are they tracking uh, that translates to a better way of advertising, which then means micro-targeting, which then means it's maybe something available to my small business guys. Chairman Gonzalez, let, let me address the broader principle first because you've mentioned it a couple times. You know, we believe, everybody on this panel uh, believes, the IAB uh, uh, and all our members believe, absolutely in the principle of consumer control. The, the reason this medium, interactive uh, digital media, has grown so dramatically in uh, traffic, user, audience uh, delight is because you can choose what you want, when you want it, how to get it, what you don't want, you can screen it out. So we believe in consumer control. Um, consumer control improves advertising. If the advertising is no good and people choose to skip it, and this is the TiVo principle, then the pressure is on to, for the agencies and for the marketers to make better advertising so that people will want to watch it. Um, so we believe in that. There are forms of uh, control mechanisms that can be illegitimately done uh, and that can certainly be illegitimately uh, marketed. Ray, in the story today, for example, uh, 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 is quoted as saying that advertising is the same as spyware and malware. Well, it's not. Spyware and malware are criminal things that get put on computers illegitimately. Advertising is something that, as you uh, noted, pays for a wealth of free services. Um, when the rays of the world do things that uh, illegitimately and illegally interfere with the ability of advertisers to deliver advertisements. Well, you know, the law should be able to go after them. Uh, however, when consumers are offered legitimate tools, as they are on every single major web browser, to screen, uh, uh, then I think it's incumbent on us as an industry to do two things. One is create better ads that people want to watch, that people want to absorb. And the second is do, is do a lot better job about educating the public about the trade-offs, that these ads are what pay for the hundreds of millions of free email accounts, that pay for all the free videos that are online, that pay for all the financial tools that allow you to uh, analyze your investments. That's what we need to do uh, a better job of communicating. Um, I think the good news in today's Washington Post story was that uh, uh, very few people, very, very few, are blocking ads. There does seem to be an intuitive understanding on the part of most Americans that uh, there is a good trade-off here. Um, and it's not, it's a good trade-off, not a, an unhappy trade-off. They're recognizing that these tools and services make the advertising more relevant to them. And the relevant advertising is as good as the content in informing them about how to live better lives. So I, I think we're in a good position, uh, but we do need to recognize there's importance of education and that when people are illegally uh, blocking advertising, we need to be able to go after them. Mr. Lent. It's a new model. We're, we're dealing with an entirely new landscape right now. Consumers ingest media differently today than they did five years ago, than they did ten years ago. We need to recognize that. The, the anecdote that you, you brought forward on, on Humphrey Bogart and, and Casablanca, it's, it's funny. And, it's, and, and you know, I, I think, again, anecdotally, it makes some sense. The reality of it is, it would never, it would, the consumers would never stand for it. Right. They wouldn't ingest that media. If, it, in today's world, that, that analogy does not hold true. If they, if, if, if Paramount Pictures created that movie today and they said, you're about to board United, your United flight on the way to, Con to Casablanca Hotel, consumers see right through that right now. There's too much content available at their fingertips within two clicks. They're not going to stand for that kind of blatant integrated advertising. We've had to step up our game 
dramatically as an agency to build relevancy to, for our brands. For our clients who come to us and want to communicate, have a two-way dialogue with their consumers, it, it, we, we consistently talk about avoiding the, the, old, the old trap of, of interruptive advertising. And the whole relevancy of this data, the, the data, the transformation of, of the model allows for data to give insights to the consumer. And as Mr. Rothenberger said, as Mr. Rothenberg said, there is, there is content, there is advertising, and sometimes it's hard to tell which is which. And if the, if the advertising is as strong and as valuable to the consumer than the content itself, then it is in fact advertising. And I could give you a, a very direct analogy to a project we created for, for one of our clients for Bacardi. They don't sell rum online. Obviously, they can't sell rum online. But they wanted to reach their consumers in a unique way. We know what their consumers do. They, they drink rum at nightclubs. And at nightclubs, music is the hero. So we created the most robust online music mixer and hired professional DJs from all over the world to create content that consumers then go online and create their own songs, download them th to their iPods, vote on them, send them to their friends. That's relevancy in a branded communication. There's not an ad on the site. It doesn't talk about the product. It doesn't talk about any of that. All it does is add value to the consumer that leaves behind a positive reflection on the brand. That's the new model of advertising. And the relevancy of understanding what consumers' interests are, it's a natural foray. This data propagates more relevancy in a, in a conduit, in a communication conduit. I, and I'm not saying that collecting this information is not valuable in the terms that you just described. The question then is about full disclosure, the consumer knowing that the information, that they are being tracked, and, and it's very interesting to the degree that they are, because I'm not even aware, and I, I need to correct myself, and I apologize, but most of the people in this room are so young, they never even seen Casablanca. Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman in that uh, scene, and, and not Lauren Bacall, that was the other leading lady in other movies. <laughs> Uh, but that was the have and have not. Oh gosh! Yeah. There's well, anyway. And that had boats. That had boats and not planes. But